And we're talking about events. Now, you have a whole bunch of servers that you need to monitor, all these machines right here. And it used to be you'd have to go machine to machine to machine to machine to machine. Then they invented remote desktop, and you had to go over machine to machine to machine to machine to machine. But now we have what are called event subscriptions. With event subscriptions, I can go in and I can have all of these machines send their event log information to the gathering machine. So let me go ahead and show you the, the graphic here. So you have a source computer and the collector computer. And you can do it a couple of different ways. You can have the collector computer just go and get them, or you can have the source computers send them to the collector computer. And this is done by setting up subscriptions inside of your server manager. So let's go out to the machine here. And the first time that you go into the subscriptions interface right here inside of server manager, what's going to happen is it's going to pop up a dialog box. It says, now, if you're going to do subscriptions, you have to have the Windows Event Collector Service running. And this is the, when you see it, it's only the first time that you ever go into this interface. If you say, no, I'm too busy right now, then you'll have to go into the services and turn it on after the fact. But we'll just go ahead and turn it on. And it'll set to uh, turn on. And it'll also set so that it runs uh, automatically when the system runs in there. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to have the system running. Now, of course, you have to uh, tell the event collector utility that you want it to actually work. And so what you'll do is you can do WEC util QC. So we'll go into the command prompt, WEC util QC. And it says, the startup mode will be changed from delay start. Would you like to uh, proceed? And I'll say yes. So now this particular service will run as well. So you can either do it in the interface, or you can do it right here. Or of course, you can also go into services inside of your uh, server manager. However you want to turn it on, you can do that. But that WEC util QC, that is on the bottom in uh, page 104. And uh, you may also see that in a small dark room after paying a <laughs> a couple of bucks to go and take that. Now this is on the receiving machine. You also need to go to the machine that is going to source the collection files, these uh, source computers. They have to have the quick config turned on, just like we saw with the, um, with the core server. And the, the command's exactly the same. So let me go ahead and show you that. So go ahead and fire this off. And we're going to do uh, WinRM, Windows Remote Management, quick config. So you do the quick config on any machines that's going to be running and sending these out to the collector machine. It says it's set up to receive requests, set up to allow remote access. Um, if you want to create this with an HTTP uh, remote listener, then you could go in and put it to any IP address. It's already set up. Do you want to enable a firewall exception? We'll say yes. And now we have uh, WinRM all nicely configured, and it will accept HTTP. Now you can do HTTP or you can do HTTPS, which is nice because then we don't have to open up 900 different ports on any firewalls if we're collecting this remotely. Questions and answers, not the little votey thing, but the questions and answers. What is the default port number for HTTP and for bonus points, HTTPS? So what are the default port numbers for HTTP or HTTPS? Go ahead and chat it in. We can uh, talk about that. Alrighty, and people are chatting in. We'll let the interface chillax for a moment while people are still chatting. Dan has fastest fingers. It is um, port 80 for HTTP. HTTPS is port 443. That is your secure socket layer. So port 443 uh, is typically what you use for SSL. So we need to do secure online banking, all that other stuff. Um, some folks will go in and they will do um, statically configured ports above 1024, which is fine, but the default is port 80 and port 443. So if you're going to do these collections through a firewall, a uh, regular firewall, you just need to make sure that those ports are open for you to send in. Now, when we talk about this collection, you can have the ones that are collector initiated or you can have source computer initiated. In other words, what determines whether or not I go and get the files or you send the files to me? And they talk about this over on 104. When you do a, a collector initiated, it's a normal delivery method. That means it's going to deliver about every 15 minutes. So it'll collect these up and then drop them off. Now, you also have the, uh, this normal delivery. What normally de normal delivery does is it says a minimum of five. So if I don't have five events, 
when the 15 minutes kicks off, it'll still do the, uh, the delivery of these particular messages. But if I have five events or more, then even if it hasn't been that 15 minute interval, it'll go ahead and send it to the collector. So if these machines over here are having a problem and we're using the normal delivery, this will go ahead and uh, collect these um, uh, within, within the uh, 15 minute time, even if we don't have, uh, or I'm sorry, if we have more than five or five or more, it'll go ahead and collect them. If uh, it is uh, 15 minutes, it'll go ahead and collect them. We also have source computer. With source com computer, we have two settings. We have minimize bandwidth and minimize latency. When we go with minimize bandwidth, what it's going to do is, is it's just going to try and limit the frequency of the network connections, and it will uh, actually have a bandwidth timeout of about 30, or I'm sorry, about six hours. Uh, if you do the minimize latency, then it delivers them within 30 seconds. So you got to remember if you're if you're kind of hardware uh, restrained as far as WAN connectivity, you may want to go with minimize bandwidth. But again, it could be up to six hours before you hear the information. You can use the WinRM to go in and change this interval if you would like. They show you the WinRM, get WinRM slash config, and then you would modify the match ba max batch items. Or uh, you can also do a max batch item or match box item time. Uh, one thing about these, these commands are over on page 105, they're case sensitive. So lowercase and uppercase, in this case, it does matter, which I'm not a big fan of. So let's go ahead and show you how you would configure subscriptions. We're going to go out to the source machine to begin with. I'm actually going to do them both on the same machine, but I'll just show you how you can do this. So we are in here and we do the WinRM quick config. So again, just like we did before, when rm, oh, I guess you want to see as well. My apologies. Thanks for chatting in. When rm, and we don't have a slash q u i c k c o n f i g. Now I've already done this before, and it just simply says, "Hey, you've already done this before. We're good to go." Um, and that's pretty much it. If we're going to do a pull subscription, then we'll specify the delivery mode as either minimize bandwidth or minimize latency. Uh, this is also done with when. Uh, RM quick config. So now we'll be over on the collector machine. This is the machine that's going to retrieve these. One of the things that you may see is when these subscriptions come in, where are they going to show up? And they're actually going to show up inside of our, we'll go into our uh, Windows logs, and they show up into forwarded events. So these are the events that I have received. Um, I'm not a big fan of the name. But that's why it makes such an exam question, a great exam question, right? So anytime we receive these events, they're going to show up into forwarded events. So let's go ahead and do some uh, additional configuration. You do a WEC util QC, which we've already talked about and I've already shown you. Then we would go into create subscriptions by going into subscription, right click, and I'm going to create a subscription. And we get a nice little dialog box. And we'll give it a name. We'll say we'll say IIS 7 event logs from um, LAX SharePoint. And then we could also put in description as we want. Uh, what destination log? Now I said by default it goes into the forwarded events, but you can have it go pretty much anywhere. Uh, however, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have it in different places. So my recommendation is to go ahead and keep it into forwarded events. We have collector initiated. That means that this machine who's going to receive the forwarded events is going to go out and get those forwarded events. And I would go in and I would select particular machines. I would say add a domain computer and then just put in the name of the computer. Simple as that. Um, if I do source computer initiated, then what you do is you select computer groups. And in my opinion, this is a little bit handier simply because I can create these groups inside of Active Directory, drop machines into that group, and then uh, I would just pick which uh, domain group we want. Now you can do this with a uh, domain computer. You can also do this with non-domain computers. But when you do this, you can also add certificates. That way, you don't end up having some I don't know, a hacker machine, filling up your computer with a whole bunch of bogus event logs. So you would actually need to go in and add a digital certificate on uh, to ensure that uh, these machines are who they say they are, and it's just not some hacker filling up your system. You would also have the ability to set what you want to collect under selected events. You'll notice that we have uh, dates and times. We can specify any time, last 12 hours, 24 hours, custom range, whatever you want to do. 
You would specify the type of events, for example, criticals, errors, warnings, information, probably, probably not all that exciting. However, you can filter it down even more. So we have a variety of logs. We can say by log or by source. On the event logs, it goes through and it shows you all of the Windows logs that we have. Maybe I just want to look at security events, for example. We can also do application and service logs. These logs are going to be uh, populated based upon what that remote machine has. So if I go in and I say DNS server, and the machine that I'm monitoring isn't a DNS server, it's not going to have that log. So there's no point in that. So you have to know what particular logs that you have. Underneath Microsoft, underneath Windows, there are tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of logs. One of the um, one of the impulses that some junior administrators may have is to just say, monitor everything. And the problem with that is, is that it is going to slow the source machine down. Plus, you're going to have so many log entries, are you going to have time to actually view all of these? So, you know, kind of filtering it out a little bit, only selecting the things that you honestly care about is definitely a good practice. We can also go in by source. We have event sources. This would be .NET runtimes, DLLs, applications, um, everything. This is very useful if you're trying to do um, troubleshooting on a machine that has intermittent problems. So I want to just get those logs from this particular machine that is relevant to that particular issue. So you have a lot of granularity as far as what you're going to go through and pull down. Now down here you have event IDs. You can go in and you can type in an event ID if there's something specific you want to look at. We have various event categories. Uh, some events have keywords, audit failures, response time, all that good stuff. You can also put in information on specific users. Maybe it only happens when Doug logs in or only when certain computers log in. This is uh, one of the things that folks will use if they're trying to monitor unauthorized access from a particular, like a kiosk machine or a secure machine, I can go in and put in that computer name, and then anytime it tries to authenticate, if I have the authentication logs up there, it's going to notify me. But if somebody else tries to authenticate against that machine, we won't care. So it won't uh, go in and log that. Um, and this is going to put together all the stuff via GUI uh, interface. If you want, you can also do this with XML. So it just shows you the results. You can say, I want to edit the query. It says, are you sure? Then you can't modify it later in the Filters tab. I'll say yes, and then I can go in and just type the stuff. But realize that once you go in and start editing this, or just turn it on to editing, then you're not going to be able to change all this stuff out. So just be aware that there could be an issue. You can't switch because you decided to go with XML, and all of our nice little settings can be lost. Now realize that once you have this turned on, you're not necessarily going to see these events right away. Because we have that, uh, that five events or 15 minute interval, or we have the collection interval that we have set up.